Hi. Well, I was told I was going to Chongqing. I thought, hot park, karaoke. But here I am, a six hour drive from the city, on a fire trek up that mountain in the village of Chongfeng. And I've been told that today, farm work's on the agenda. The young couple in the family have recently moved back from Guangzhou to raise their family. And as a sideline to earn some money, they're actually raising honeybees. And look. This farm is a thousand meters above sea level. And this plot of land is perched on the side of a mountain. And although they've been offered homes down in the town, the older generation are really reluctant to give up their farmland. Hello? So it's hard to grow rice on the slopes of these mountains and I've been told that the staple here rather than rice is potatoes or corn or sweet potatoes. The smoked pork and sausage in this area takes about 12 months to dry and not only is it a staple across all of the tables here, it's also quite a lucrative product at markets around Chinese New Year. And the way it's done has actually been listed as an intangible cultural heritage of the city. Smoking up until just a few decades ago was the only way that villagers could preserve their precious pig that they slaughtered once a year because refrigerators were so out of reach. And it's really smoky in here. here in this village to try my hand at farm work. In fact, I'm here to see how President Xi Jinping's signature concept, a community of shared future for mankind, is being put into action. Xi envisages a world which is clean, inclusive and free from fear and poverty. So can China lead the way in terms of poverty alleviation? This is Xinhua Special and I'm Helen Bentley. China defines people's economic status through five factors – food, clothing, housing, healthcare and education. If you lack any of these or your annual income is below the national standard, you will be classified as poor. If you are classified as poor, then you're included on the National Poverty Register and you'll get help from a local official. And if you look at this here, this family of three is actually poor because of the father is disabled. And thanks to government assistance to help them raise pigs and chicken, also to cover health care because of the father and to help them build a new home, the family increased their annual income in 2017 to over 7,000 kwai. Ten households in this village still live in poverty. Ms. Wen's family is one of them. And this family meets all the economic requirements bar one, housing. Their home has been deemed unsuitable for living in. Therefore, this year, they'll be entitled to a government renovation grant for their home. These measures help individual families find a path out of poverty for now. But for a rural community to thrive and prosper, roads and schools are what make the real difference. The only way up and down these mountains used to be by rickety ladders and winding steep paths. And you really can't underestimate the difference that it's made since those paths were widened and connected to the main road down in the valley, even if it is still a bit of a bumpy ride. Alongside the main road, a new school has been built with modern facilities for all the students that used to attend schools that were scattered all along the mountains. Cheng Sheng Fu is the only teacher for the 11 students here across two grades. He also doubles up as the school cook. Tangfang is one of 92 poor villages in this township. In just four decades, 700 million Chinese were lifted out of poverty. 
That's the same number of people who remain in poverty worldwide today. The UN has called for an end to all forms of poverty by 2030, and China plans to achieve this goal 10 years ahead of time. Whether the China poverty alleviation model is suitable for other nations remains to be seen. But what it does offer is some clear success that brings hope and can embolden those fighting poverty in other parts of the world. The key concept in the President's vision is a real community, like the villagers here in Tongfang. When she talks about a shared future, he's talking about global solutions to global challenges like pollution or poverty. Whether we like it or not, the fate on this planet is a fate that is shared by all. It's only when we all push in the same direction that the common fate that awaits us can be truly called a community of shared future. See you next time.